What if I told you there is a way to run IP-based protocols like MQTT or BACnet or others over a lower one connection? Yep, there is one. And it's very chic. The pun is totally intended. Alexander from IMT Atlantic in France joins me on the IT show to tell us everything we need to know about SCHC, an IETF standard that is really shaking the way you can do communications in the world of IoT. As usual, if you like this episode, give us a little like, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell for getting notified. Let us know how we did in the comments as well. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we will talk on how we can make IoT a little bit more chic with Alexander today. Alexander, how are you? Hi. Hi, Olivier. Very nice to meet you. Excellent. Thank you. You're good. Perfect. Where are you calling from? Um, well, we are in France, in the west part of France, the city of Rennes, which for the people that are in the knowledge is something like the Silicon Valley of IoT. Uh, if I, if I may say so humbly. <laughs> yeah, no, you do. You, you may. There's like lots of good project and interesting companies uh, around there. Um, it used to be southeast of France, where it was like kind of the Silicon Valley of France, and now it's kind of moved up uh, where mm. there's less people, like nice nature, good uh, properties to be in, and so on. There's some wine if you go a bit south as well. Anyways, we're diverting. That's not what we're here for. <laughs> Even though the topic is cheek, but we'll talk about that in a nutshell soon. Before we get there, give us a little bit of background about yourself. What are you doing these days? Where are you coming from? What do you know about? Um, well, today I'm associate professor at uh, the Technical University IMT Atlantic, um, which is like a very big engineering school in France, one of the major engineering schools in France. Um, but in the past, you know, like in the past seven years, I was co-founder and CEO and CTO of uh, a startup uh, called Aclio. And basically we developed, we invented and developed a technology uh, called Chic, which is the way to pronounce uh, the technology, which is SCHC, uh, which stands for Static Context Header Compression. Um, so okay. basically, I've been working in the domain of IoT for the past 15 years, very active at the ITF. Um, I'm a member of the IT, IoT directorate of the ITF, and, and really there are a lot of beautiful technologies coming from there. SCHE or Chic, and it's not because we're French, we like to put some fancy names on things. I think it's actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, you, you, I'd like for you to tell me, in a nutshell, without spoiling too much, because we'll go into the detail. But what is your elevator pitch for what is Chic? Well, Chic is basically a way to make your protocols better. So we're talking about like networking protocols and the way to make them more efficient, where you can define the way you actually, what you understand by efficiency. So in a nutshell, the Chic is a compression technology. So you take a packet, you compress it, you get a smaller packet. You can cut it also in smaller pieces if you want to, but that's uh, another thing. And then you can use that to optimize for, for example, have better energy efficiency, have more devices in your network, or maybe have a lower latency. You know, so all these things that, you know, IP is really great in, in having interoperable communications. But if you want to really optimize for something specific, well, Shake is a tool that you can use for that. But it goes beyond just compressing and reducing the amount of data that goes through a pipe, right? So um, th th we know there's a need to connect devices anywhere, right? We, that's called the IoT show here. So people yes. are aware of this notion of bringing online things, right. whether to you know monitor your environment, your assets, your machines, people going around. Uh, and so you need to have that connectivity. So tell me a bit more about... The, the inception of Chic in that context. It's, it's really interesting, right? as you said, like people are very passionate and we have all these kind of technologies that come around and that are very good. Like we have Wi-Fi, of course, which is uh, everywhere. We have cellular communications, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of communication technologies that have been developed in the past 10, 20 years. Um, and 
each and every one of them basically says, I'm really, really good. I'm very good in doing this, this particular thing. Like I'm very good in communicating over a very long ranges, but you know, with a very low bandwidth, like this is the LP1 technologies or, or, or maybe over satellite communication. So I'm very good in covering a very wide area, but again, like, and you need to send all that signal to the space and all that. Right. So lots of, lots of, lots of different uh, properties of the communication technologies. And then people like today, they're very like, okay, we can just take that technology and put an application on top of it and, and we're ready to ship something, right? Yeah. Um, but this is something that when you look in, in and this is with the, the person that we co-invented the technology, uh, Laurent Toutain uh, uh, at MT Atlantic, uh, basically mm-hmm. we said, well, this is the history repeating, right? Every time that you have a new technology coming, Everyone says, oh, it's so perfect. Well, let's just put it, put it on this application and, it, and we ship it and it's good. But there is something that is really important and that, that is actually the, the core of the success of the internet. It is that you have this layer of interoperability that allows you to decouple developing services and applications from the technology itself, right? And otherwise you have like something that is very uh, ossified. You know, you developed a very specific use for very specific technology. And, 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 and then when you go to your customer and the customer says, oh, that's really good. But, you know, I want something that is like 90% the same, but 10% different. Or maybe I want to mix technologies, right? And then you have to go back to the drawing board or, or, or to, the, to your development studio and, and add code, add code, like develop, test, like develop, test, prototype, test, develop. And then and you, you go into these endless cycles of, you know, developing and adding features. And everything. yeah, and, and this is exactly what has happened in the beginning of the, of, in, in the beginning of, of, of connectivity of networking technologies. And this is a problem that IP solves. So uh-huh. IP is the, 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 the pivot that allows you to decouple both. And, and this is like in the beginning in 2012, 2013. So we had Sigfox, you had LoRa and LoRa One a little bit later. And, and basically we were reinventing the wheel for every application over these different technologies. And we yep. saw that and we said, well, you know, we've seen that and we know that we need this pivot layer, like the IP layer between that decouples the application and the communication technology. Yeah. But IP on itself, it's too fat. I mean, too fat for these technologies, at least. And so this is where we, we, we started from the principle. We, we identified the problem and said, okay, we need something that can make IP as lightweight as possible, as for it to be as virtually, you know, with no impact. Um, and, 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 you know, we started with, with this work. And uh, initially we... Um, found a couple of technological solutions that were possible. And then we also identified that in order for that solution to be adopted, we need also to standardize it. Um, because, you know, it, it's part of the internet, it's part of the, of the bigger picture, right? It's, it's, you need to, to get adopted by everyone. Otherwise, you're yeah. just like well, a guy in the corner, right? you know, and, and, and maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but people are not going to adopt your solution widely. Right. Correct. And we're seeing that actually. You you are saying that very rightfully, uh, which is there are so many new protocols that are coming up in the realm of IoT communication, right? For good reasons at the end of the day, because they're all trying to address problems, uh, specific exactly. problems, uh, but also the need to standardize for interoperability. And and yes, it's great that everyone should be on the same page at a certain level and then eventually divert in the different types of implementation. Um, there's also a need to support legacy hardware, I guess, right? brownfield yes. scenarios. Um, in, in general, how, how are you perceiving this evolution of the, all these technologies? What are the myths and realities you, we want to debunk regarding, you know, because... Is that that almost religious debate about which one is better than the other one? Which one will become the protocol for devices to communicate? Lots of people say MQTT is the way to go for telcos, and then suddenly someone comes in and say, "Well, but lower one is the radio you need to use, so no MQTT because it's too fat, doesn't work on that. You need IP. It's an IP-based protocol, right?" So, how do we how do we perceive all of that, or how do you perceive all of that, and what do you think are the things that will 
frame and become a reality in all that noise that we're hearing about uh, communications and radios for IoT. You're perfectly right. And, and I, I really um, agree on, on this topic. Like there is not going to be one single technology that is going to address all the different use cases, right? There are technologies that are very, very energy efficient, uh, but, you know, they don't have a, a big bandwidth. Uh, there are other technologies that, you know, can deliver very huge amount of data that you can transfer over but you're going to use your battery in a day, like if, if it's a normal battery, right? So starting from that, you really need to be able to adapt to the, to the use case, right? And, and, and generally be able to mix technologies, right? And from, from that point on, right, you, you need to keep the, the key, the thing that made the, the success of the internet, which is this some point that allows you to make the abstraction of the lower layers and the upper layers, right? For example, we talked to a, uh, uh, a prospect of ours that's what, that's what a major utility and basically they told us well you know our software that is communicating with these uh, uh, let's say smart meters um, it costs so much to adapt that to a specific new technology right that doesn't speak IP that even if you give us all the technology for free and all the thing for free it's going to cost us more to adapt that particular software to be able to communicate with them right so for me, there is like a, a, a basic um, understanding, like a basic awareness that needs to, to be more spread around the, 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 the IoT world that is there like good engineering principles of building systems, right? Mm -hmm. And every time that you go against these principles, well, you are going to hit hurdles and walls and, and you're, in the end, you're going to adopt IP in some way or the other. It's just that you're going to reinvent it in some way or the other. Right. Yeah. So and, 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 and so um, basically, I said that with too much words, but like having IP over your technology, it's like a good engineering principle. If you want your technology to be successful at some point, um, even if you have your niche uh, application, that's OK, well, that's great. We have this customer and they have lots of units and they don't need IP. Right. Yeah, that's one customer, one use case. But in general, what you want is your technology to be applicable to a wider range of applications and wider yeah. range of customers, right? And, and this is where, at some point, you want to be compa compliant with uh, uh, legacy devices, with with legacy applications, and and this is where like IP is a must. Like it's really the the the, uh, the universal language. Yeah. And and this is a work we did, which the work we did with Chic actually was to enable to have a super lightweight way of adding IP to your specific technology, right? Got it. Which, be which before that was impossible, right? You needed to have the whole the whole shebang, right? The whole IPv6 and stuff and then neighbor discovery and all that. And that, you know, and, 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 and it was just not designed for IoT, right? Yeah, it was too fast for these scenarios where you need to save battery, you need to optimize some bandwidth because you are on radios that can be super expensive, you know, satellite or other yeah. like that. Um, before yeah. we before we dive into Chic itself in terms of how it works and how you make it happen, because some might wonder, wait a second, you know, IP has been out for so long that surely we have optimized it since then. But you know, we'll get there. Um, the, before we get there, let's make let's try and make things a bit more concrete with an example. Right? You talked about use cases. Um, the need to connect to uh, a legacy or, or brownfields and like infrastructures, um, as well as being compatible or interoperable with existing protocols. So you have a concrete example that will illustrate things for people who might not be that much into IoT or into mm -hmm. telcos. Um, well, our our first market that really took off uh, was in the smart metering, like in in the energy business where uh, utilities, you know, they have these critical infrastructures. And mm -hmm. for for them, they, they mix technologies, right? And they need to be sure that when they de deploy something, uh, it will be interoperable. There's not you're not going to have like a lock-in with a specific vendor or something. Uh, it needs to be based on standards. It needs to be there for the next thirty years, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, and all these things very naturally they they lead to the requirement of some standards, right? Uh, one of the major standards in the world. For, for the electricity meters, smart electricity meters, is DLMS. DLMS is a requirement, for example, in many countries, 
in all European countries, if you want to, uh, of the European Union, if you want to deploy smart electricity meters, they need to be like compliant with DLMS. Um, countries like India, like uh, Brazil, and uh, many, many countries around the world, parts of the US also, it's like a hard requirement. And so when DLMS, which were traditionally uh, designed for power line communications, or some kind of cellular, but not too much, uh, a little bit of mesh networking, right? So when they opened the chapter of actually adding LP1 technologies, such as LoRaWAN, um, well, they said, okay, we need to basically rewrite the whole spec. Or we say we use Chic and we do some profiling and stuff, but it, it gets pretty lightweight, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Chic enables IP, right? Because IP is already in the standard. So basically, when we were in these discussions, we accelerated the, the go-to-market of DLMS smart meters with that, maybe in, in five by five, six, seven years of engineering wow. time that would have been required. Yeah. Like, for, so, and, and I just want to, to show something. So the, the standard, the SIG standard was officially, the first RFC was published in April 2020. Um, the whole work with DLMS was finalized by the end of 2020. And we had these things getting deployed on the field uh, one year later. Right? So that is, that's a smart electricity meter um, that is DLMS compliant. And it is a modular design. So um, initially it was like for different technologies. We just needed to add this. Uh, and that's actually the manufacturer that added a LoRaWAN uh, uh, communication module inside. Yeah, and yeah. We, had our, we had our software inside, like it's, it's a small compression library, like compression fragmentation. And, and, and it works like it's everything inside it is an, it's IP, right? And wow. we didn't have to rewrite any, anything, any, anything of that, right? So it turned LoRaWAN from being like a specific technology that you use only for specific use cases into a normal IP connectivity, right? Uh, that's magic. Uh, that's almost uh, magic, I would say. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. Because, it, yeah, I would assume that one year to get this product on market means that they didn't touch much of the software itself that that uh, you know is above that DLMS stack you basically come just she just comes under that and and allows this lower one stack to actually show as an IP stack to this application right exactly exactly you had sockets you have exactly and 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 it integrates so on the metering side it integrates and also on the on the, the side of the operator, the network operator, like the head-end system, as they say in the utilities world. like and, and these are systems that cost, like, I don't know the exact prices, but it's like hundreds of thousands of millions of, of, of euros, of dollars. So, uh, you know... I was about to ask this, this uh, yeah. notion of, like, you're compressing in terms of, really, the data itself and the protocols, but then on the other side you need to talk the LMS as well. And so you need to yeah. decompress, right? And so there's two bits to shake, basically. There's the device part of it. That, yes. And then basically you abstract the channel between the radio, the pipe. It's totally abstract. It could be a wire. It could be the same thing, right? Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So, yeah. So yeah, how, and then, how, does work? Yeah. How, how is that even possible? Let's talk about, uh, you know, how it's all <laughs> connected and, and how it works. So you have basic principles in there. So let's go with the first one, which is that notion of compression and fragmentation of the information. The first part when we started designing it was, of course, we identified that like it, it's just too wasteful to send all these uh, uh, IP headers, like IP and all the different protocol headers um, over the air. Given that we have very specific applications, like it's machine-to-machine -machine communications, IoT communications, basically the firmware doesn't change. Like It's not like a smartphone where you download a new app every day and it contacts a different cloud every day or something, right? It's, it's let's say, the, a smart electricity meter. Well, it's speaking almost the same kind of data to almost the same server every day. So you can just provision in a static way a dictionary both in the device and in, in the network part, and just don't send all the things that are repeating. And by doing that, you can actually achieve a huge amount of, of reduction. Like they are the, the source IP address is almost always the same. Destination IP address is almost always the same. Once deployed, it may never change, right? UDP ports or TCP ports. And then when you go field by field, you can describe actually, well, this doesn't change, I'm not going to send it. This doesn't change, I'm not going to send it. This, this thing here has 
two possible values, so I can encode it with one bit, even if the two values are like 50 bytes, right? So so you get one bit. And and so we, we got, by applying these very simple atomic operations, we got to something like 90% compression. 90% compression when you apply that to the protocol headers. But you also then you can say, well, you know, I can go and compress the payload as well, right? Um, yeah. And it is a very, very lightweight uh, compressor. So it's not like a, a, a some complex algorithm working all, all over that. So very energy efficient, a very small small code necessary to do that. So extremely optimized way in actually okay. doing 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 that. So what what format does it come in? Is it like piece of code that you have to insert into your a radio driver level? Is it something you burn into your code of the application? Like, how, what format uh, is expected, especially for developers? You can go both ways. The easiest way is you have like a communication module. I, I'll give an example with Laura One, but it can be Myoti, it can be Sigfox, it can be whatever, whatever you yeah. want. Like, and the communication module, like it, it can include this chic uh, uh, stack with it. Okay. And so basically, you have eighty commands. And they are like 80 send, 80 receive, 80 configure the communication profile, the compression profile. So that can be super lightweight in that way. And if your communication module doesn't support that, well, you can include it in your application. Like you can say, well, I have like a, a, a LoRaWAN module or NB-IoT module that, that comes from a vendor and it's like a black box. The firmware doesn't support that yet. So I can just include it in my code base and and, and it will do all the, all the magic on, on your application side. Got it. And so you are uh, allowing customization, basically, because if that's something you can integrate into your application, I would assume it's not binary and you can adapt that. The the high-level protocols, they have their own way of trying to optimize, right? Yeah. So like a good example is try to find the balance between a keep alive message and not using too much of the bandwidth. Isn't that messing up with your way of optimizing things under the hoods? Well, that's yeah. That's one actually. That's one of the problems with energy efficiency in particular. But in, in there are some other the properties of the networking protocols um, that when you ha- you can have a very beautiful, very efficient uh, uh, networking technology that the communication technology can be you know it can deliver great efficiency. But then on top you have some protocol, um, let's say a security protocol that is going to send keep alives or like every 30 minutes, let's say. And then on top, if you have another application protocol, say MQTT, for example, that sends on another different 30 minutes, then your radio will be waking up every 20 minutes, let's say. I don't know, just for the keep alives on the application level protocols. And that are not related in any way to your to your data, per se. So some of the things Shik doesn't solve directly. Shik solves the way that you are going to compress your data, it's going to reduce your data. If the data is too big, it can cut it into smaller pieces and it will give you all the, the flexibility for you to use standard APIs, like a socket or something standard. It can provide you, so we have developed also like a DTLS stack that includes Shik and, um, and, and all these things, right? So it solves them. It will not solve your problem if your application stack is sending every 30 minutes a keep alive, right? Yeah. But you will need to adapt that in 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 some way. What Schick solves is that so it's an RFC, it has been published by the ITF. So it is part of the IP stack, right? So you are doing IP by doing Schick. It saves you from the obligations to send periodical updates. Like we said from the start, whenever you are in the domain of Schick communication, like it is, we are aware that devices can be very sleepy. So you don't need to send every minute like, hey, I'm here. And so your IP connectivity on that level is valid, right? You're not doing some hacks or something or something like that. So in that sense, Chic allows you to, to be a lawful citizen, a lawful IP citizen, and still sleep your device um you were saying that there's some sort of a dictionary you know that is generated that allows to to do that compression and, and optimization on the data not to send data several times or whatnot and and i would assume dictionary ties into the different protocols that are out, out there right like would be mqtt or um you know macnet modbus whatever and and so my question here is 
are you it was generating these dictionary like are there is there a, a catalog of them available out there who's maintaining that um you know how does it work um well this is this is one of the beautiful things that we did about chic is that we did not specialize it for a particular protocol right or particular technology yeah. right we we designed it as a framework um in this way you can take the like the basic operations the atomic function of chic and you can say oh, well i have this specific protocol so I'm going to construct the way my dictionary is going to be to act on that particular uh, specific protocol. Like BACnet is one example, uh, but there are a lot of examples in the like electric vehicle recharging. Like OCPP is uh, is yeah. a protocol that's pretty much used there. Like you describe your OCPP protocol and you say, well, this field I'm going to compress with this uh, uh, with this function. This field I'm going to compress with this function, and you're not restricted to only compressing IP or, or some other protocol, right? Uh, and, and there is actually a way to describe this. There's a formal way in which you can describe the way you, the, the operations, so which operation, with which operation you compress which field. So it's standardized. So you can actually build your compressor on, on like the way you want it. At the ITF, we've done some work, you know, to define out how some protocols are compressed, for example, co-op. So there, you, you, there's an RFC on how you compress co-op. There is a security protocol that's called OSCore. So actually, it, it describes how you compress co-op with OSCore. Got it. So yeah. there's like an RFC on that, but you're not limited to what the RFCs are saying. Right? One, one of the works that is ongoing now is basically you have a trace, a pickup trace of, of your exchanges. You run an algorithm, like a machine learning-based algorithm, and you mm -hmm. just puts out that like, pops out your compression dictionary yeah. that's an ongoing work but at the end of the day the point is to have like okay i have this ultimate communication optimizer i run some algorithm and poof everything gets as efficient as possible All right okay. by keeping by keeping the interoperability that that's really important there's still lots of work. That's important for people to realize. So let me get back to that question of security. Let's assume I want to have my MQTT device connected over lower one to my uh, cloud backend, right? And when I do MQTT and I want to connect to a backend, I will do that over TLS. I will definitely have a, an encryption layer that itself goes over TCP. It goes over IP, right? So all matter of yeah. layers. Um, yes. How does that work? Well, that was also one of the uh, one of the requirements for us to be able to to use certificates, like for for the, the security stacks needed to be standard security stacks, right? Mm -hmm. From this in the in the beginning, you know, there were like bespoke security solutions, and people were saying, "Hey, we're we're really good, and we're very secure because we're using you, we are using AES, a AES one hundred and twenty eight or something, right?" Uh, but we were talking to to companies, utilities, and they say, "Well, in our security policy, it's written that we need to use certificates." And the, the key size needs to be at least a 4K, like 4K bits. So like we, by, by, by our security policy, we cannot deploy lower one. And that's a problem for us, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where we actually, you know, we said, okay, well, in the TLS stack, you have a version that is adapted to UDP. So that's called the DTLS. Like, so we're mm -hmm. going to make sure that we have a DTLS operating, like a standard DTLS operating on lower one, right? And um, basically, the, the thing that consumes the most in these in these IoT type of applications is the handshake. In the handshake, you have all these like huge messages in the beginning. Hey, take this is my certificate, and this is this. all right. But you can all uh, you can you can compress that. You can provision that, and basically you can reduce significantly the sizes of the messages. Mm -hmm. But also by selecting some um, ways of operation of DTLS which are fully standard. You can reduce the number of handshake uh, of message of exchanged messages. You can introduce things that are already existing in the DTLS stack, which are fast resume of the communication. So you don't have actually you don't have to re handshake every every time you want to say one byte of message, right? Something like this. So basically, Chic compresses the DTLS package outside. Then you can apply Chic inside. To further reduce the, the 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 data, right? That you are that you are compressing. Mm -hmm. So first you compress first you compress the decrypted payload, right. you compress it, then you encrypt, and then you compress again. 
So like you have double shock. Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> double compression, like a double wheel. Double... <laughs> exactly, double, double compression, right? And then you use really nicely some options that are already present. And we had like 70% reduction in in terms of con, con data, like in terms of consumption in a real live network. So we've measured the energy consumed by the by the communication module. Yep, yep. Like we're, and, and like the, the, the size, it's like we had 80% of reduction of the Wow. And the bytes over the air, right? Was that without diminishing the level of security? And that's critical, right? You're, you're reducing the, the, the power consumption by reducing the amount of data that is exchanged on the radio, but you're not reducing how, how, how secure these packets are. Exactly. And, and, and tomorrow, like we, we are, today, we're talking about post quantum communication and, and post quantum security and, and so forth. Like, and that, that's going to become a reality. It begs the question. It begs the question. Like, well, you, you say Shake is part of IP. You're doing IP when you're doing Shake, but will Shake basically become <laughs> IP or will it replace IP? Do you think? Maybe it's controversial. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, at some point, I was actually because I'm like IETF guy, like IP. When we talk about IP, it's IPv6. Yeah. Even though it's IPv4 in a lot of parts of the world, but like IP, at some point I was very surprised to see people talking about, hey, this is this technology, this is going to six low pan. And like people were using the word six low pan to, to illustrate a specific operation of, of IP. So six low pan is like a compression, like an older generation of compression used in mesh networks, like mm -hmm. Thread uses six low pan and all this. But people used six low pan instead of saying it's IP. They said, well, it's six low pan because, you know, the industry guys, they understand what that means, right? So probably at some point people will say, well, it's IP with chic, just to signify that, well, you know, it's like the, the optimized version. Like it's the best, the best thing you can get out of IP, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is a way to rethink the way IP works. But we'll see where that goes. And actually, that leads me to my next question, which is, what's the state? What's the current state of Shake? Is it available? Is it an actual standard? And are there implementation, open source or commercial, that people can go and use? So there are several standards, so RFCs that are out there. Foundation of all that is RFC 8724. So it's available for everyone to read and like free of, uh, uh, um, like there are no IP on it. So it's really, it's the foundation of the framework. It describes mm -hmm. how the whole thing works and how, if you want to make a compressor, fragmenter, you know, how you can build on, on your own for any kind of protocol, right? There's a couple of other RFCs that describe how that should work on NBIoT, on Sigfox, on LoRaWAN, you know, that, that like a profiles for specific technologies, right? Right now, um, in, in, in terms of, of software, so there is an open source core network software so which in, it's in like in python you can go and like uh, uh, very easily build your, your own uh, uh, core network with that last month we published an open source embedded implementation in c so it's it's basically the industrial grade implementation we did back in actlio uh, time yeah. actlio was acquired by actility and actility and imt atlantic we made a common lab so activity put in the open source, so with MIT license, very open license, a state-of-the-art implementation that has all the bells and whistles, has all the certifications necessary with it, that's a DTLS security layer. So it, it's a little technological miracle. It's, yeah, it's so, ready to go. Yeah, it's ready to go. It, it's, it's, the one, it's the one that's been deployed, like for, it's been in operation for two, three years now in critical infrastructures with no bugs. Yes. What what we are working right now is basically uh, uh, right now we consider LoRaWAN to be solved, Sigfox to be solved. You know, like there are a lot of deployments that it, it's there. We can start and using use it today, right? Yep, yep. But there are a lot of new communications that are uh, that are coming and the communication technologies like satellite communications, interplanetary communications at the ITF communic communicating with with other planets, right? Um, but it's very interesting because other than this, let's say, like they, they, they can see far-fetched technologies in some point, in some way, we have six low pan adopting Chic. So basically 
even six low panel saying, okay, well, there are these huge, very interesting compression advancements. So let's do, uh, let's, let's, let's integrate them both. And also from that also comes thread. And we have IPsec. So IPsec for your VPN, where we are going to have the exact same operation where we have inner compression, which you can outer compression. Uh, so there's a draft on that. So you can go and, and read it and uh, if you want to implement it as it is. We have a very interesting developments coming from uh, initially from 3GPP with uh, for 5G, 6G networks that for uh, ambient IoT. Uh, so basically the, the way I like illustrating it, it, it's probably not as everyone is saying, but it's basically like an RFID but that is talking to your 5G network. Like the 5G, uh, your phone maybe can send a signal, which is then uh, which can then uh, power with a little bit of energy your this this tag that is maybe on your T-shirt. Yeah. Then it can send a couple of bits over the air to the infrastructure network. So you can have this kind of devices, and, and it's a work ongoing on 3GPP and uh, in Wi-Fi Alliance. So wow. you're also going to have Wi-Fi devices, your Wi-Fi in your home. You're going to go just put tags wherever you want, like they have no battery or a little capacitor. So, you know, very low cost and and, and very uh, environmental friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these things will be communicating. And in order for that communication to happen, you need at some point to to get the data from the device, you know, or from your gateway to to the server. And for that, you need IP. And the only way to do the IP with one or two bits, it's with, by using Chic, right? That's actually, yeah. you know, triggering a lot of ideas and, and you know, I like connecting dots. And, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing also a trend in the IT industry for um, the SOMs, the system on modules that will support different radios, right? Because sure. devices might be in different situation and you might be at some point connected using Wi-Fi. And then at some point you move out of the building and you need cellular, but cellular might not be, uh, you know, you might not have good coverage. So you will switch to satellite and maybe you will have a lower one antenna nearby our gateway and so you'll be able to connect through through lower one but now you're switching from one protocol to another one and i can see the nightmare it can be at a software level to kind of do the roaming across these different types of radios and networks uh and i can see chic here becoming that common layer that allows you to have a unified way of developing apps to communicate independently of what radio and and type of network you're using. I know Particle has this kind of SOMs. Arduino has some as well. I interviewed a guy um, about Walter um, recently on the IT show. That trend of having multi-radio support in devices in these SOMs is definitely an actual trend in the IoT space. And so I I don't know if I'm connecting the right dots here, you tell me, but I have the feeling that we're going in that direction. We need Chick. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and and that's the point, right? The point is that and uh, Chic solves whole whole bunch of problems that are the same across many applications, right? You're yeah. not developing one application that needs to take care of. Okay, well now I'm on Wi-Fi, so I'm going to do IPv4, and now I'm on on satellite, so I need to do something special, and now I'm. Uh, these are all different APIs. They are all different mm-hmm. ways of addressing the devices. And and how do you know that? So a whole bunch of questions that you as a developer, if you have to solve them on your own, like maybe you'll get that right, maybe not. And and maybe tomorrow if your customer comes and say, hey, I, I have this new other technology, so how do I do that? Well, again, you need to go back to your drawing board, right? Yeah. And, and that's that's what gets your IoT budget Every time, like, well, ah, well, but you know, now you need to add another like times the, yeah. the, the thing that you paid already, right? Whereas if you solve that on the same level, which is where things should be solved on IP and IP with Chic, mm-hmm. then it, it it comes like, oh, okay, sure, well, we'll just activate the Chic function yeah. on that connectivity, and it works, yeah. right? The advantage of of leaning on a standard that is sitting at that right level you're describing, um, and and I do believe um, from what you just described and explained, and uh, we all need to go dig more into um, the GitHub website, which is we're going to put the link down there for people to go learn more. Uh, that this this certainly is the best level of abstraction mm. to standardize on communications, uh, especially for IT devices. 
Alexander, we are we we went through a lot today, um, oh. and we could talk and talk again uh, for hours. But uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll stop here and have people go and visit the site here. Anything you would recommend? Like, what do you want people to go do? Try it out. Provide input, feedback, questions. Uh, did they like? Should they go through the GitHub site and repo? Um, yes. So definitely, just go go to the GitHub site and and, and the repo. And, and you'll see like there are a lot of platforms already supported. Um, everything is open source now. So if you have a platform that you would really, that you would like to add, we'll be very happy that you publish that back, right? Because it's it's actually very easy. Uh, you, you only have one, one C file to implement, like three functions, I think, or four, send, receive, and timer set or something. Like it was really written for, uh, um, for to be ultra portable. Works yeah. on free art toss for on bare metal. So, so basically, go check at it if it's already supported. Check at the examples. There are a lot of working examples. So there's an example on GLMS. Oh, so you can get like a working demo on GLMS um, out of the box, um, and contribute back, of course. Um, and uh, feel free to, to to share back your questions. You know, um, the goal now is so for me the way I see it. Chic in 10 years, Chic will be in most of the new wireless devices. Like it 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 just saves bits over the air, right? Yeah. And then this this this, this yeah. yeah, this this translates directly into more energy efficiency, less devices, like better throughput, less devices. So you, it's only gains, right? And now and for me now it's just to say, well, how we can make how can help this transition? Like how we can structure it in a way that you know people get the most benefit right away. Awesome. Thanks all to Alexander for your time and thanks everyone for tuning in today and see you soon on the IT show. Bye. Thank you, Olivier. Bye.